you probably hear far too much about scientific consensus. A lot of this has to do with the climate skeptics who pursue this relentlessly. But I would argue that they either don't understand what scientific consensus is, or deliberately misconstrue what it is in favour of an anti-scientific position. They give the impression that scientists get together every now and again to hold votes about what's real and what's not. It's nothing like that. But to understand what scientific consensus is, we first need to discuss what science is. Science is not about proving something right. It's about eliminating errors. So a researcher will come up with an idea. This will be called a hypothesis. And then that researcher will go about trying to disprove it. Of course it will be in their field of research. And they'll use the skill packages that they've been taught to use. And if this idea continues to stand, regardless of how much they try to knock it down, they'll write it up and submit that to their peers. At that point, two things will happen. Some researchers will then go and repeat the study to ensure that it was done properly and that the results are valid. Other researchers with different skill packages and different backgrounds will then try to knock it down from a different angle. And if no matter what they do, the idea continues to stand, well then the relevant scientific community will say, this idea, to the best of human knowledge, within this one field, seems to be the most reasonable answer for reality. Every other possibility that we can understand and have spent a lifetime researching, every other conflicting idea that could have existed has been eliminated through many thousands of research hours across multiple generations. This isn't to say that the idea is right, it's just the most right that we're aware of. The scientific consensus is not about saying this is reality, it's about saying that all other alternatives just don't make sense to the expert community. It's not to say that in the future it may be revised. However, everything that we could possibly know in that field, which is resulting from those researchers, leads us to that conclusion. That's it. It's not about authority, it's not about tradition, it's just simply that that one idea is the only explanation that makes sense with the knowledge that we have. Think about it, you never have skeptics about the world record holder for sprint running. It can be revised over time, and it is revised over time. In either case, there is room for somebody else to come along and prove it. But even if it is revised, that's where we stand today, and the room is there for people trained in the field to revise it. And that's exactly where we sit with climate science. When we look at numerous disciplines of science, we find that researchers that have looked into what a doubling in CO2 concentration may look like have come across the same ballpark figure. This is amazing. They're not all buddies hanging out together. These are different researchers, different fields, coming up with the same conclusion. And that's pretty impressive. On the other hand, you've got the climate skeptics. They do what Eugenie calls a shortcut. Now, let's just say that I find all of this research and peer review to be burdensome. And let's say that it's so much easier for me to go to a state legislator and convince him to pass a law that determines that Jeannie's brilliant idea will just go directly to the classroom <laughs> without having had to go through all of that tedious uh, research and peer review. Now, you can imagine that my colleagues would be rather annoyed at me. And I would, uh, I, I would be strongly criticized by my colleagues for, for the unfairness of my cutting to the head of the line. They had to go through a very laborious process to get into the classroom and the textbooks. I took a shortcut. I cut to the head of the line. That's unfair. And it's so amusing that the, both the creationists and the global warming contrarians will present their view as being one of fairness. We're going to teach standard global warming and anti-global warming because it's so fair. No. What is fair is for them to take their arguments to the scientific community, go through that same um, gauntlet, uh, go through that same ringer of peer review that all the rest of us have to go through. And if their ideas are valid, great, we'll teach them. If their ideas go into the scientific consensus, we're happy to have them in the classroom and the textbook. This is not a religion. You know, global warming isn't a religion. It's something that a lot of people take very seriously because the data are so strong in support. It's like they've come across the world record for sprint running and simply said, no, that's not true. I'm the holder of the world record. Bypassing the process by ignoring the experts and then presenting it as if it's fact is atrocious and does our species no credit at all.